This video looks at subroutines, of which there are two types, procedures and functions. So what is a subroutine? Well, as you write bigger and bigger programs, you get more and more lines of code and finding errors, editing the code can become very difficult. So what sensible programmers do is they make use of subroutines. Now a subroutine can be thought of as a mini program uh, that sits in the background waiting to be called and when it's called the main program will pause the um, code within the subroutine will be run and then once that subroutine has finished the attention will turn back to the main program and the instructions in the main program will continue to be executed so here's an example of the main program or an example main program um, and we are displaying welcome to the 10 times table and then the next line that says times table, uh, bracket, bracket, that is a subroutine call. Now what it will do is it will call a subroutine that has been written elsewhere in the program that has got the name times table. Now in this uh, subroutine that we can see, there is a for loop and basically it will loop around and it will print the 10 times table to the screen. Once that for loop has finished, the attention will turn back to the main program and the last instruction which is simply um, an input statement which will pause the program uh, will be executed. So here we are calling the procedure, the procedure is then run and we then come back to the main program and that's the idea of subroutines. So a procedure is a type of subroutine which when called executes its code but it doesn't pass anything back to the main program. So here's um, the, another example of a procedure, and this one is written in Python. Now, when we run this program, the um, procedure will be ignored, okay? So where it says DEF, where you're defining the procedure name called print name, all of the code within that procedure will be ignored, and the program will um, run the first line of the main program's code, which is print welcome to the name printing program. It will then print a load of stars. And then that third instruction in the main program is the uh, procedure call. So it's going to call the procedure. At that point, the main program pauses and the attention turns to the procedure. The code within the procedure will be run where it will ask you for your name. It will ask you how many times you want your name printed. And then a for loop will print out the name that you entered the number of times you requested. Once that procedure has executed its code, we come back to the main program and we complete the code within it. Now at this point, it's um, a good idea to look at the different types of variables that you can have in programs. So there are two types of pro uh, variables that you can have in programs. They are global variables and local variables. A global variable is defined in the main program and a local variable is defined in a subroutine. So with this code example here, we've got the main program, which starts by assigning the string me2 into a variable called s. The second line of the main program is a function call. So we call the function, and if we look at the code in the function, we are assigning another string to a variable called s and we're printing it to the screen. We then turn our attention back to the main program where we have one more line of, uh, of um, code to execute which is printing s and you can see in the example that I hate spam comes first and me too comes second but we've got the same name for the variable so this highlights the difference between a global and local variable we've got two variables called s but they are separate, they are actual, actually separate locations in memory. The s that contains me too is a global variable. The s that was declared and assigned a value in the procedure is a local variable. So in terms of the ordering, the main program will assign a value to s, but a, the global variable s. It will then run the function where I hate spam is assigned to s and that's why that is printed first so I hate spam is printed first we then come back to the main program where we're printing the global variable s which is why me too comes second so there's your local variable and there's your global variable so if a subroutine doesn't assign its own variable 
it's going to use the global variable. So here you can see that I haven't actually assigned a local variable into the function f. I've just printed s and s was already declared and assigned the string I hate spam before the function call which is why it prints out the global variable as you can see in the example output window. So they're both global variables there. Now using variables, global variables, local variables, that certainly has its place. But what we do often want to do is actually pass variables, values from a variable um, into a subroutine and pass values back out. It makes for much more efficient coding. There's less chance of error by overwriting the value of global variables by some function somewhere. Um, it's much better to pass a copy of a value into a, a procedure and work on that value and then pass it back to the main program. So we'll have a little look at parameter passing now, passing values into subroutines. So we've already seen we can use subroutines to better organize our code so that finding errors and editing the code can become easier. And this is, a major, uh, this is because major sections of our code is self-contained and separate for one another. But one problem with the way that we've previously written subroutines is that the data inside it stays inside it and these types of subroutine are called procedures. So let's have a look at uh, passing parameters into uh, procedures and the benefits of doing that. So if we wanted to write a program in Python which printed the 10 times table we might write the code that you can see on the screen. We have written our um, mini program that prints out the 10 times table in a procedure and we've called the procedure uh, which is called times 10. But what if we wanted the user to choose what times table they wanted to view? At the moment, they can only view the 10 times table. What if we wanted them to pick a particular times table, perhaps two, three, or four times table? What would we do then? Well, with our knowledge of subroutines at the moment, we may decide to give them a little menu system, have lots of different procedures that have been written, one for the seven times table, one for the eight times table, and so on. And then with our menu system, they could pick um, a particular times table that they want to view and using some um, a selection if the choice is 7 it will call the times 7 procedure else if choice is 8 then it will call the times 8 procedure and so on so this is a way of getting the user to choose but there's a big big problem with the way that this code has been written there is a lot of repetitive code lots of duplication and programmers don't like duplicating code. They want their code to be efficient, and this isn't efficient. So there's a much better way of actually coding this program, and that is using the idea of um, parameter passing. So in order to make um, a more efficient program, so having less code, what we want to do is have one procedure, which will do the multiplication, and pass a different number into that procedure depending on what the user chooses. So that code that we had before, which was a fair few lines, this actually replaces it and it becomes much more efficient because it doesn't limit them just to four different times tables. They can now pick whatever times table they want. So here we've got an example where the main program, there's a while loop, and the first instruction that will be executed is asking them to enter a times table of their choice. They enter a number, any number, and that number will be stored in a variable called choice. And then the magic happens. We've got a procedure up the top here called times table. But when we call this procedure, there's one extra thing that we've got. We've got the variable inside the brackets. So we're actually going to pass the contents of this variable, which is known as an argument, into the procedure called times table. And that's going to be picked up. That argument's going to be picked up in a parameter called number. Then this procedure has got a value in number which it can work with. It's going to do a loop for 10 times and it's going to print the counter of the for loop which will be uh, 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, all the way up to um, until it gets 11. So it will print 0 multiplied by and then the number that was entered um, into this procedure 
let's say it was a 6. So 0 multiplied by 6 equals 0 times 6, which is 0. Then it will loop around again. The counter will now be 1, so it's going to print 1 multiplied by 6 equals 1 times 6, which is 6, and so on and so forth until the loop is done. So here is an example of passing a value into a parameter uh, in the procedure, which will then work on that number. So the procedure above now takes on the value passed to it from the main program. A value is being passed into it for processing, and this value is known as an argument, and this process is called uh, parameter passing. So the value in choice is being passed into a variable or uh, parameter called number in the times table function. And it's important to realize here that the variable name of the value being passed doesn't have to match the destination variable name. Notice that we're passing choice in and uh, number is, is the um, parameter that's picking it up. So this is it's just the argument within choice that's being passed and it's being picked up in the parameter called number. Okay, so that was procedures. So procedures, remember, do not pass a value back to the main program. They can accept a value from the main program and work on that, um, on that data, but it can't actually pass it back, whereas a function can. So we're now going to look at functions, which is just like before, but this time we're returning values back to the main program. So the previous example showed how data can be passed into a subroutine. A function is a subroutine that also returns data back to a main program, and this can be really useful. The way that we do it is that we assign a variable to the function call so that the variable is assigned any value that the function returns. So here we've got our function call, which is the function name. We've got a parameter that we're going to be passing in, um, into the function when we call it. But instead of just having the function call, we've got a variable attached to it. So we're actually assigning this function call to a variable. And that means that anything that's returned back from the function once it's executed its code will be picked up in this variable ready to be used in the main program. So here is an example of that process. We've got our function and we've got our main part of the program. The function of course will be ignored when the program is run and the first thing that we're doing is we are asking them um, what number they would like to multiply. Whatever the user types in has been put into num1 we're then calling the function called multiply by 10, passing whatever number they typed in into x. It's then multiplying x by 10. The answer's being put into y, and then we're returning y back to the main program. And y, because it's being returned, is going to be put into the variable which is assigned to this function call. So let's have a look at that again. So we've got an arrow showing the passing of the number that's entered by the user into the parameter of the function and then we have got y being returned back into the variable that is attached or assigned to the function call. Now Again, here we've got an example where instead of passing one argument into a function, we can actually pass two or as many as we want. So we're asking for a number to multiply, storing it in num1, and then we're saying, what number would you like to multiply it by? And that's going in number two. We're passing num1 and num2 into our new function called multiply, which is going to pick up those two arguments. It's going to multiply them together, put in the answer in z, and then returning z back to the main program, which will be picked up in the variable called answer and then printed to the screen. So here we are passing those two values now into the function's parameters. And then we've got z passing, uh, we're returning the value of z into our main program, which gets picked up in the variable called answer. And again, it doesn't matter the names of the parameters which are passing the arguments don't have to be the same as the name of the parameters which are picking them up. They just have to uh, be in the same order. So num1 goes to x and num2 goes to y. And finally, we can actually return more than one answer as well, or what, more than one uh, value. So here we are again passing two values into our multiply function. 
Z is going to be the result of them being uh, multiplied together. And A is just a string, which is your answer is. A and Z are passed back to answer. And it will be passed, uh, it will be put into answer, which will be a tuple because it's going to have more than one value. So it's another data structure, a little bit like an array. And we could then, if we want to, print each index of the, um, the tuple back to the screen so we could actually have each of those bits of data separate or we could print answer which will combine the two together.